Hello everyone. I'm Jake. I'm Hannah. Hello. And we did the we did more of the Reuben. It's a Reuben day. Oh god. Okay. Th this video and the next day Reuben video, mm. I don't know how long they're going to be because there's nothing mm. of substance to say. I I don't think there's that much of substance in the chapters. It made me mad. It's so That's stupid. That's the substance. Maybe the substance is our is our um Rage is too strong a word, because that's not how Dave Rubin makes me feel. Um, it's... What's the... It's like when someone fucks up your order on door... Like, you're not going to take it out on them, but you're also just, like, really fucking frustrated that it happened again. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like again? I've again? I've never once... I have never... And actually, once I had an issue with DoorDash, but that was my fault because my address was incorrect. And one of the but other times other you time. had it, the only other time you had a problem was when we ordered it to my house. Yeah. yeah. And you witnessed what I go you. through. Maybe. I'm I'm single-handedly propping up their livelihoods right now, so. <laughs> like, anyway. Uh, so this, this fucking, okay. This guy. This guy. So this section. Every country has its baggage. He uh, doesn't mention the heaviest bag that we carry. Uh, not even the second heaviest bag we carry. In fact, he mentions no bags or weight nope. that the U.S. carries. <laughs> this is what frustrates me. So this chapter is based on nothing but, like, straw man arguments. Yep. He'll, he'll say, well, liberals... If you want to go live in another country, what country are you going to live in? And I'll name countries that when people who are, like, left and don't like how right-wing the country is, if they jokingly or seriously are like, I want to move to another country. He doesn't name the country or countries that people seriously consider when they're saying that. Yep. Instead, he goes to, like, why don't you move to China? Why don't you move to Thailand? Why don't you move to a variety of failed states? Right. You know what I mean? It's just a list of, like, places you probably wouldn't want to live in the world. And oh. also, the point that he's missing is that people like us who criticize the United States as it stands aren't saying it's the worst country in the world. We are saying we live here and are adults and therefore should be able to recognize problems in the country we live so we can work to make those problems mitigated or remove those problems altogether. That would be great. It's not hard. It's not hard at all. I, it's strange. Has he... It reminds me of the John Mulaney skit where he's talking to uh, Mick, uh, uh, Mick Jagger. And it's basically like, yeah, no, he j that's the only, those are the only two options to pick in Dave yeah. Rubin's tiny brain of country to live in. USA, yeah, Canada, no, but not for reasons, like literally, no. literally, do you want to know the reason he doesn't want you to move to Canada or that we, we won't like it? No true American likes hockey. I'm not making that up. You can read it in his book. Literally, that's the reason you won't move to Canada. L that's nothing first, else. He spends, like, paragraphs on a paragraph each on many of these. Like, China, of course, he talks about all the huge issues with the Chinese government, um, censorship. He talks about Uyghur concentration camps. All legitimate issues that would make, I think, all of us say, I wouldn't want to move to China. Of course. But when you talk about an actual country that someone like me might be like, oh, okay, I'd actually consider moving to Canada. Sure. I, I prefer, like, like uh, universal health care. And stuff like that. It's it's less right-leaning. Fewer guns. Sure. But, like, but just as many Native American uh, uh, disenfranchisements. Sure. Like, he could have mentioned that. He could have said, oh, you want to go to Canada? What about all their issues with indigenous peoples? That would be a legitimate complaint that he could use to compare it to the United States and the fact that we have our own problems with indigenous peoples. But he doesn't do that. He says, it's cold and they have hockey. Like, that's not even an answer. It's a joke. All you've done is completely sidestep the fact that there are places in the world right next to us that people might prefer to live in due to their, like, governmental situation. <laughs> and for the record, I don't think it's possible to have no fun at a hockey game. And I don't even like hockey. It's wild. They're actually a lot of fun. People are just going nuts. They're just going nuts. I don't know. Uh, everyone's so jacked about hockey when you go to it. And imagine it in Canada. It's like the only thing they have to look forward to besides mooses. Um, yeah, so we, we talk about China. It's bad there. Okay, it's bad. Here's some things that are bad about it. 
It's got it's got it's got things you can't say there. Okay, cool. It also uh yeah, the the weaker thing, uh, the 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 Chinese president, uh he might rule for life. Um Trump Trump fans wanted him to do that and we were against that and we were like don't do that and you're like mm, don't be a don't be a crybaby leftist tears. Like but we we don't want the thing that you say is bad about China. When he said multiple times, maybe we'll just skip term limits. We're like, that's bad. And you're like, nah, but is it though? Yes, it is. On the Donald subreddit, or it's not a Reddit anymore. It's the Donald.win. I go there pretty often um, just to see what they're talking about. Ooh, and I find it interesting. And I sometimes post that, that stuff. URL. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so someone, someone go check out my Twitter. I post some screenshots from it sometimes. They literally use the uh, uh, acronym GOTUS, which is uh, God Emperor of the United States. They want Trump and his family to rule like monarchs. And I'm not saying every Trump supporter does, but there is a pretty loud section of the Trump supporter base. The kind of people who probably, uh, you know, rioted and tried to foment <laughs> insurrection at the Capitol building um, who do feel that way. Yeah. So, again... Kind of hypocritical from Dave Rubin, considering he's one of the people that helped radicalize those individuals, but Poop whatever. girl and her husband? Literal yep. monarchists for Trump. That's that's uh, not not nothing. Um, next up is Thailand, which you mentioned. By the way, great food. Get some Thai food from your local place. Um, small businesses need your help during COVID. Um, also, Thai food is delightful. Very good noodles. Um, Again, he, he, they, when he talks about that section, though, it frustrates me because he's talking about, like... People getting prison sentencing for um, insulting or defames the king or queen. He or wanted that! But again, guys, when I see people who are leftists in the United States, we want to move places because we want places that have criminal justice systems that aren't as harsh as the United States. And certainly not harsher, like somewhere like right. Thailand, right? Yeah. You're literally explaining like... Yeah, harsh prison sentences are bad. I agree. The United States has the highest per capita imprisonment rate in the world. We should do something about that. Not going to mention that, though. Yeah, no. Uh, also, uh, uh, Donald Trump would have would like that system. He would he would appreciate that no one can say bad things about him. Uh, maybe Japan. And he says that. Uh, First of all, he uses refugee applicants rather than immigration, um, which is different. Um, even so, Jap Japan is pretty protectionist when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, kind of for good reason, um, and also kind of for xenophobic reasons. It's a little bit of both. Um, uh, Japan doesn't have um, a great record for human rights. Surprise. Um, neither do And uh, he says that, uh, uh, well, guess what? It's not good there because... They want to have uh, their culture how they want it, which is fine in his eyes. Um, so there's a big difference. So he's using that to kind of call out to right-wing fans of his. They're like, our white culture, our Western culture is under attack by Marxist globalists. He literally says globalist later, which um, I don't know if he knows this. I hope he knows this. Globalist is often a dog whistle for Jew, but... Um, in, in, in the stanky anti-Semitic way, not in just like a matter of fact way, of course. Um, so uh, cultural purity is not a thing that any leftist really strives for. Um, no. of course, obviously, which is why Japan is, is not ideal for, for that, but it's a different thing than, than, than the kind of cultural purity that we talk about in America. So it, he's one to one this and it's not one to one. Japan has a very distinct, different culture without the baggage of, like, chattel slavery and without the promise of a melting pot in the community and the immigration and the American dream and all the propaganda that goes into that. When we are talking about that, we're saying that we we value diversity in a way that 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 is not met in most other places due to the fact that America is kind of this, you know, it, it is protected by oceans and it's also very affluent, and so you do get a lot of people that come in. And uh, like I said, Thai food. You can't get Thai food just anywhere. You have to go to a place where Thai people are from. And I don't have to go to Thailand to experience that because we have a cool country. It's not just about food, but I'm just saying, like, I can meet a whole variety of people here, and that's important. I don't want it to be whitewashed. I don't want it to look like me. I don't want it to be whatever you think American culture is. American culture is cool in that it's not one thing. That's important. It makes us better.
Okay. My opinion on the Japanese thing is I don't really give a shit if they feel that they have a distinct cultural identity, cultures change, and the fact that Japan is so isolationist is fucking them over. Yeah, the replacement true. rate is way below where it should be. They have huge cultural issues in regard to destructive work culture that work culture that is leading them to have oh, yeah. not replacement rate. They have the They're highest... They're terribly conservative on a lot of fronts, especially sex. They have the highest per capita rate uh, rate of, like, elderly people in the world. They're cruising for disaster, basically, societally. I thought you were going to say cruising for a bruising. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> Hike the mom part, jeans up a little bit. <laughs> in part because they're unwilling to open themselves up to immigration yeah, more true. so than they already do. And it's not going to be economically or socially good for them in the long term. Look at the United States. The United States is uh, also below replacement rate, which is fine. I don't think that the, the population has to eternally grow, and if anything, that's really destructive. However, um, under capitalism, it behooves you to have an ever-growing workforce. Therefore, we have immigration make up for the lack of population growth among um, um birthright american citizen that's fine i think that's a good thing um i think it brings new people into the country it brings new ideas new 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 uh uh, uh, uh cultures all sorts of good stuff but yeah. yeah i i i'm not japanese so it's not really my business to tell japan what to do but it seems that the current course of action is not going to work out well for them in the long run right which is all the criticisms that we levy against anyone that wants like western pure western white Purity as well within the culture. Same exact problems that you would have there. Um, of course, he talks about how many immigrants we allow into the country. If we're xenophobic, we're not very good at it because 15% of the country could be an immigrant. All of the country is technically um, an immigrant, and that's kind of the, the point, right? Like we're all we're all certain generations of immigrant away from 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 when we first started, right? Except for First Nations peoples uh, and, and indigenous people who we, who we fucked over. Like, like <laughs> I don't know where they, where do you get off in this idea that like, that like we're, we're suddenly just going to stop doing the thing that America said it was about, which is, which is like, come from your lands far away and, Enjoy American prosperity, and then they serve you a TV dinner. Like, like I don't, I don't understand why they have this the, the competing ideas of like. Obviously, you want to move to America; it's the best. And then, like, why do you even want to be here? Like, like pick one, just pick one. If you want to be protectionist. Then start start pretending that you want to be that. Don't tell other people how fucking dope it is, and like like I don't know. There's just like this bully thing going on. It's very strange to me. Um, what's next up? Sweden. Yeah. Okay. He said, <laughs> this is two things that I, I yeah. I'm very excited for the the the. Well, I shouldn't say that. I'm excited for the uh, rebut of his claims on uh, the assault okay. stuff. So he says, okay, how about Sweden? That's the country every left-winger tells you is the model for what Americans should be. Well, that's fine, except the population is primarily white, which sounds pretty racist by the left's ridiculous rules. What are you talking about, what? Dave? What are you talking about? There's not diversity quotas for countries, bro. No, there I don't. There, there, that's due to a variety of, like, geopolitical factors. It's so it doesn't strange. mean you can't import systems from there to here. This is something that the right will dog whistle a lot. Yeah. I know Caitlin Bennett has done this before, um, but they'll be like, Mimsy Moon has done this before, I yeah. think somewhat recently, where she was like, hey, oh, you want us to import these models of like democratic socialism or, or, or ample social programs? Well, those cultures are homogenous, yeah. basically meaning... I don't. I don't want these benefits to go to non-white people. Yep. It's really, really frustrating. As if everyone doesn't need health care. As if everyone doesn't need social safety nets. It's ridiculous. But anyway, this is what gets me. Um, he says, "Oh, and since they've welcomed a large number of this is this is just this straight is, up. This you'll is, see the dog. Whistle. This is pure it's, it's racism. Pure racism." Oh, and since they've welcomed large numbers of African migrants, Sweden has struggled with assimilation and is now the rape capital of Europe. Now, no. that statement is as inflammatory as you would expect it to be. And the reason that... Let me read you what happened. 
Sweden, unlike other European countries, changed their legal definition of rape. Um, their legal definition of rape um, went from um, 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 sex under threat of violence or, co or coercion to sex without consent, broadening the definition of what is considered rape. So after they changed this definition, rape convictions rose to 75% because the bar for what is considered rape lowered. Yeah, which is good. And so Dave Rubin blaming this on well, African migrants is just him trying to dog whistle bullhorn. <laughs> I think brown people rape. It's That's not even so ridiculous. It's also coupled with a culture that reports at a much higher rate than than most other countries. They have a really good reporting system for that. So you're, um, for instance, we have we have rape statistics in the, in the United States or sexual assault statistics in general that we don't have good numbers on because even if you make the complaint, if it's not processed or there's no evidence for conviction and stuff, those that doesn't go into the statistics, right? It just goes into the, the claim. So Sweden's much better at that. Um, and it's not because of, like, cultural things. It's because of right-wing pushback, like, uh, in American culture. So, I mean, it's just it's, – it's, a, it's, a, it's all of those things, yeah. Um, <laughs> so Switzerland, Norway are alternative options, but the cost of living in these places is sky high. You can't be homeless in these countries. They don't let you. Then and I don't mean they put you in prison. Too. Yeah, I don't mean they don't they put you they put you in prison like we do. We don't they don't criminalize it. You just it's it, you have options. You have a social safety net. You you will have a home in these places uh and shelter to to be okay to to be a person. Uh they also have uh, robust social systems in general to help you get back on your feet if that ever happens. Um uh and um I mean, just in general, the, the you make more money. It's it's like it's like an American wouldn't do well there if they just moved there like initially, but they do well eventually, and that's the point, right? So, what what did he say? Something about like um, rich. Uh, the cost of living in those places is sky high, which would force many Americans back into the working class bracket, while the rich live it up. Hardly the socialist vision people are calling for. What? No, socialism doesn't mean everybody gets to be rich or not be working class. Socialism, in the way that it's always communicated every single time, unless it's by a right-wing person, is about a quality of opportunity, not outcome. It has nothing to do with outcome. A quality of opportunity meaning they're based on your class, your race, your sex, your gender, your sexuality, whatever you got going on with you, disability, learning, uh, your... your, your, your um, I have no idea. Sickness, like like no, none of that stuff should prevent you from like like uh, trying to achieve a goal, whether it's whether it's getting an education or trying your trying your hand at uh, certain vocations, whatever it is. That's the idea, and you have a better shot in a place like Switzerland or Norway than you do in America. It's just it's just how it is. You can see from every index human beings have to judge this sort of thing. These countries outperform America now. Just because we can have billionaires here doesn't. How many is there? Is there a billionaire in Norway? If I type in Norwegian billionaire, that's definitely going to pop up, right? Kjell Indroka is the richest Norwegian. With a fortune of roughly 18.6 billion Norwegian kroners. How is he going to survive? He doesn't have hundreds of billions of dollars like Jeff Bezos. He only has 18 billion dollars. Well, Frederick... How is he supposed to survive? I mean, think of Frederick Wilhelm Mohn, who only has 6.6 .6 billion Norwegian kroners. Uh, 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 that poor man! Yeah. Oh, and uh, and ranked third is Norway's richest woman, Margaret Bold German. Who they won't even? She's so not well off. They won't even tell me how many billions of kroners she has. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, this is, <laughs> uh, France is no better, except they have uh, pan du fromage. So, right, du fromage. That's French. French, right? I don't know French stuff. I'm not fromage very. Fromage is cheese. Yeah. All I do fromage is a All friend, I do fromage? Is a, is a cheese omelet. Anyway, so, All I do fromage. so he so he says that uh, uh, <laughs> this is the part where he dog whistles. Once the cultural capital of urine, France is now suffering under the leadership of globalist Emmanuel Macron. 
As as I write this, Paris has witnessed months of yellow vest protests over rising fuel taxes, and they look set to continue. Hmm. He wrote this before other things were occurring in the United States. <laughs> Would you rather live in France or the United States, right? Assuming nothing else about your life changes, except the country you live in. <laughs> If you, could, I, you could take your friends and family, you could take your house, you could take your cat. If France I knew or America. French, I would say, you know. France. Right! Because they all have, they could go outside. <laughs> like, like. <laughs> I just, also, I don't know. Also, I like that his, his example is, look at the people of France organize and protest. Right. Uh, for their, first, their, their working class rights. They don't have a first to amendment. Stick it to, but, like. I mean, they do have they do have free speech, but they don't have the First Amendment because it's yeah. our Constitution. Um, they're, just doing, they're just doing they're just they're just doing that. They're doing yeah. what we do when the First Amendment happens. It's not a that's not a problem. Um, imagine having yellow vest people go out and collectivize to get political change. <laughs> what is, this guy, by the way, liked the insurrection at the Capitol. That's fine. Um, uh, oh, and then he mentions like places that outlaw homosexuality, like Zambia. You know, in our leftist spaces, when we all say, "Boy, the United States is a mess," I sure do wish I could move to Zambia. <sighs> Morocco's pretty dope, though. Not in the way, uh, just from like uh, aesthetically. Um, yeah, cool little hats. Yeah, isn't that where um, uh, that one Casablanca is? Isn't Casablanca in Morocco? I think um, so. Uh. Or many other places that operate under Sharia law, where you can be stunned for adultery. Um, and then he goes, he does this thing. He does the thing. Uh, Hannah, Hannah said uh, that he would do this earlier. Now I'm going to read to you each place he says. These are the examples he gives. Afghanistan, Egypt, Iran, Iraq, Malaysia. Ooh, Ian Miles Chong is there. Nigeria, Pakistan, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, the United Arab Emirates, which wouldn't be that terrible. Uh, and Yemen, they have nice hotels. Um, not Yemen, United UAE. Uh, although they have to dress modestly and know their places as women, which means minimal freedoms and male chaperones, even for a trip to the mall. He goes to malls. Um, <laughs> that's pretty weird. Uh, so, so that's his. That's his big. Uh, United States is pretty. Is pretty great. Um, so. I guess with it, what we agree that the United States is a pretty decent place to live, but we're not. That's not the decent's not the bar, right? So wouldn't you always want to improve the place that you're living in because there's no such thing as perfect? No, and as no, 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 no. I bought a 1990. No, I bought a 1998 Toyota Camry. I have never done any maintenance on it. I've never changed any parts. I basically just put gas in it because it's my American duty to funnel gasoline into things and into combustion engines and burn them so I can go zoom zoom fast. I eat cheeseburgers in it. I've never eaten a different meal. And this is how I roll, okay? It's not American made, but they do have... It was, it was cheap. So. Uh, fuck off, Dave. Just fuck off. This is so stupid. This is the dumbest. Is, do you have any parting? Do you want to tell, tell us how great America is? Look. How great's America? There are worse places to live than America, and I don't think us or, or any leftist that's reasonable has claimed otherwise. Of course not. But that's not the point. Our bar should not be, are there worse places in the world to live? Our bar should be, collectively as a society, how can we work together to make the most comfortable uh, and prosperous lives for all of us collectively, because that's what society is, is us coming together to try and work together to make a better environment for all of us to live. Mm -hmm. And that's what we should strive towards. Not resting on our laurels and saying, I'm doing good enough, fuck everyone else who can't within this system. It should be, okay, I'm doing well, other people are struggling, how can we change things to make sure that all of us are succeeding in some way as long as that you're putting the effort in? I, I, I genuinely don't understand this thought that you can just say, well, there are worse places to live. At least I'm not literally being thrown off a roof right now and go, yep, 
that's a reasonable worldview and that's a reasonable thing to strive for in your politics just not being thrown off a roof for existing <laughs> it's sick it's sick i don't even it know is. i don't know what they like about america i don't either because I don't get it. When, when i think about like they uh, freedom of speech unless it's stuff we don't like do you like i guess guns sort of but but like is that a is that better than like the rest of the country they don't like they they don't like big government unless it's their big government yep i don't i don't like i i just want you to live whatever your life is the happiest way you can live without the threat of death if you fail under capitalism which we'll talk about next time in yes capitalism is good don't quote me out of context that's his uh that's the next chapter yep that's not my opinion um so um we'll be doing that it's a short one but boy do i have so many problems with it wow it's so short this is all the same page yeah all this is one page so i didn't have to split it up this time when i sent it to you yeah so we'll we'll talk about that of course he couldn't possibly not utter alexandria ocasio cortez's name <laughs> did i say alexandria on accident alexandria Al, we, uh, her and I are tight. We we call each other Al and Jay. Sure, I'm sure that that's definitely what happens. I had a dream about you last night. Um, okay. Um, it was a good dream. We were hanging out. It was it was it was a young Hannah who had uh uh uh. You were you were the same as you are right now, just young. You were wearing a very okay. pretty dress, but we had your old, that shitty car you used to have. <laughs> yes. Um, um, and my, uh, and we were driving around, and um, I forget why, and you were driving, and there were like kids, it was like Halloween or something, they were rocking around in costumes, and kids kept walking into the street, and you kept having to avoid children, which sounds like your nightmare, by the way. Um yeah. But also, my alarm went off on my phone, and let me just, let me just, the sound it makes is, is stupid. This is the sound it makes, right here. Like that. That's it. My brain didn't go, alarm. No, no, no. It incorporated it into our experiences together while we were driving. Suddenly, in my hands was a small circuit board with, with, with knobs and different, different bells and, and shit on it. And we were trying desperately to figure out how to make it stop making noise. We didn't throw it out of the car, of course, which would have been the right move if you couldn't figure this out. You and I were trying to fix and, and move different, like, little pieces of metal to make it stop dinging on the bell, but then a different bell would ring, and we'd have to do that. It was really stupid. That was that uh, that was my dream about you. That's it. We were riding around in your shitty car that you haven't had in, like, pff, five, six years, and the, the, like, purple interior or burgundy or some shit. You know, I, like... <laughs> I had a terrible dream last night. Was it about it me? Was... No, it well, wasn't. Well, fuck. We could have synced up. It was a, 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 it was a high school stress dream, oh. but it incorporated every high school stress dream trope. Oh, and also you a new, And also a new one that I haven't had before. Oh. Uh, so first of all, this is something that you might not have. I mean, you might not. You definitely don't have in terms of high school stress dreams. Okay. First of all, in the dream, not out of the closet. That's a whole other level, because high school is a lot of that for me. Well, sure, so yeah, it, that makes it's, sense. It's, it's me pre, pre-working pre on my transition, obviously. Um, but at the time, you didn't even know that you... Well, well, I knew are you, were I you was work, uncomfortable Were you with working with bisexuality, or were, were, like, in the dream, or you were, were you just... I don't, I, I don't know the specific... You are just having a stress dream, about it. Was, okay, okay. Yes, okay. Um, I forgot my locker combination. Every uh, time! Every time! What is that about? I uh, uh, had a math test where I, I forgot to go to class Two. For, like the whole year. Same. Um, and here's a new one. Ooh. Um, this is, uh, it was someone I actually knew in high school who I had a crush on at the time. 
But of course, you know, with, with the the hindsight of, of being an adult, be like, uh, uh, reco- uh. recognize that they would have been a terrible person right. to, like to spend my mm-hmm. life with in any way, shape, or form. She's a nice person, but we we just would not have, you know. <laughs> oh, I have those too. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, in the dream, she got pregnant. Wait. Oh, wait. Okay. Yeah. I forgot you had balls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, how? Wait, what? Nowadays, I'm not getting anyone pregnant because about the hormones. <laughs> no, I just, but, I like, just, I just... <laughs> In the dream, it's pre-transition. So it, it, it <laughs> fucks me up because I'm now stuck with this person in some way, shape, or form through this, 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 this child. And also, I have this, like, connection to, like, uh, ma- I don't know how to explain it. Masculinity and in, in, in impregnating someone and, and... Oh, that makes uh, sense. That makes sense. And it's uh, uh, yeah. That... That was a real bad dream. It was just all sorts of stress. Can't imagine time. that has any daddy issues under the surface. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly, that's, but uh, that's yeah, funny. it was all just terrible. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's funny and also, well, it's funny that it's not real. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's, that's, that's horrifying. That's terrible. I, I don't know what a, I was so never, stressed about. I never had a dream when I had a kid before. That's, that's a new one for sure. It's always, I miss the, um... I miss the uh, the test or whatever, and um, it's always like I'm whatever age I am now. I have a home, my dog, my current girlfriend. Like like that sounds like I'm gonna dump Sarah, but I mean it's just been happening for years. Uh, whoever whoever I'm with at the time is who's, who's in the dream. Like the, all those people exist, and then I go wait, why am I in high school? Like every time, every single time, and I always end up skipping a class that I'm not doing well in, and I don't know mm-hmm. why. That's not something I would do in real life. I'm very stubborn. I wouldn't just be like, okay. I wouldn't just be like, well, I'm failing. I'm not going to that high school class. Like, where the fuck else am I going to go? They don't let you walk around in high school. It'd be like, Jake, why are you not in your class? You've been here for forever. We know where you're supposed to be. Like, I have a small, small school. I don't know. Very strange. Anyway. So. That's our dream segment of this episode for some reason. I uh, don't know why it happened. Well, come hang out with us for more Stream of Thought. Um, come hang out with us uh, again for some Yes, Capitalism is Good. The, uh, yeah, I know. We have to wait until we turn this recording off and start the yeah, next one. Yeah, yeah, I know. So we'll be back for that. Come hang out with us. 